developing um, through the other government represent representation here today, small, small but very, very powerful. And we're seeing that in our next uh, presentation, which will uh, be a video presentation from Dr. Miriam Dali. Uh, Dr. Dali is the Minister for the Environment, Energy, and Enterprise for Malta. Um, not happy with just one portfolio or two, Maltese thought, let's give Dr. Dali three portfolios. And what a job she's doing prior to taking uh, this uh, trinity, if you like. Um, formerly, it was, um, it, was, it was energy, environment, and sustainable development. So absolutely has packed this notion of longer-term sustainable development thinking into the economy. Um, prior to that, um, one of her many career highlights, and uh, there is a thing called the internet, and you can find a lot of things about Miriam Dali, a, a, a very long Wikipedia uh, entry. Uh, but one of her highlights was that she was also uh, a member of the European Parliament um, uh, up until, I think, 2015, uh, or, or, or up until 2020, I believe. Uh, and one of her significant um, uh, tasks was, was actually representing uh, the European Parliament in the COP talks in Paris. Um, what a job the Europeans did. And I say all this with great envy, of course, because I used to be a European. I'm no longer a European. Uh, but I crave to once again become a European. And so I, when I visited Malta recently, I was really taken by the power of such a small island. I really had a great time there, and so I'm very much looking forward to, to another visit. But without further ado, let's tune into this very powerful video from Dr. Miriam Dali. Thank you. I have been responsible for the enterprise sector alongside the energy and sustainable development sectors since November 2020. Bringing these sectors under one portfolio seeks to support the transition of businesses towards sustainability. A transition that makes good economic, good social and good environmental sense. We must better our efforts for sustainable growth that works for businesses, that works for the environment and also society at large. Research and innovation are the main tools to bring about the change required in establishing more sustainable internal processes and also reducing externalities. From an environmental perspective, hemp also provides an alternative option to more environmental impactful products, such as in cosmetics, where the market is already exploring the production of CBD for multiple uses. From a different perspective, cooling, dehumidification, ventilation and lighting are the main consumers of energy. And here lie opportunities to increase efficiency during these processes. In general, the best time to take advantage of energy efficiency opportunities is during the new construction phase. That is, at the time of design and also planning. As an empty warehouse is being transformed into a new growth operation. I strongly encourage new growing operations to embrace best practices, starting from the initial design stages and going forward. Although less common, existing growth operations can also find opportunities to perform cost-effective upgrades, which are more feasible for ongoing operations. And this is very much aligned with the government of Malta's vision towards achieving more energy efficient operations, reducing energy consumption, and also achieving climate neutrality by 2050. The Maltese government is working towards strengthening the capacity of entrepreneurial actors to innovate. And we're doing this by ensuring constant support through various incentives for the promotion and also expansion of the industry and also the development of innovative enterprises. For instance, thanks to the various support schemes made available by Malta Enterprise, businesses in Malta are becoming more digital, they're becoming more sustainable, 
and also more competitive. And in so doing, we are ensuring that businesses are given the opportunity to enhance their operations and also increase sustainability. I take the opportunity to also mention this ministry's initiative to develop the Malta ESG scoreboard. This will help illustrate the ESG credentials of companies, in turn allowing investors to incorporate these credentials into their investment decision making. In 2018, Malta enacted legislation enabling the use of cannabis in the production of medical products and also research purposes. And today we have five fully licensed producers and we have medical products which are manufactured in Malta and which are already on our pharmacy shelves. We have an important number of other projects, both manufacturing as well as research. And they are setting up their activities to be licensed in Malta in the near future. Now, getting here has not been easy. It has been a steep learning curve. We had to face various challenges and also barriers along the way. And if I had to mention, one of the major challenges that this sector faces is certainly the fragmentation of regulation. And not just between different regional blocks, but sometimes even between neighboring countries within the same region. This disharmony and lack of transparency in legislation, regulatory frameworks and quality impedes and challenges the flow and supply chains. What constitutes a medical finished unit in one jurisdiction is a magistral formula in another. And CBD remains a grey market in most jurisdictions and standards differ across borders even within the same regional bloc. So I believe that harmonization and clarity is a must for our companies and entrepreneurs, the healthcare profession and also patients alike. Our journey has also been impacted by the COVID pandemic, which has affected the growth of the sector. The government in Malta has supported all its economic sectors through various measures to mitigate these challenges and to also support the financial viability of our businesses. The Malta Plant Medicine Week held last month in Malta was a testament to a renewed momentum and also impetus to grow the sector, following a two years which were very, very difficult. But another challenge remains, the availability of institutional funding. Provision of banking services and financing is a challenge on an international scale. Companies in this sector especially startups, have to rely on private investment, whilst access to institutional finance remains almost impossible to achieve. The SAFE Banking Act, enacted in April last year in the US, is definitely a step in the right direction, which hopefully induces similar action within other regions. We have also witnessed progress from the London Stock Exchange, when it allowed, for example, the listing of three medical cannabis outfits in September 2021. One of which, namely MGC Pharma, has a manufacturing presence in Malta. Meanwhile, we continue to see more countries moving towards regularization of cannabis across all its aspects, including adult use and also the scheduling of CBD, of which Malta is a pioneer. I am certain that as more jurisdictions embrace these trends, improve patient accessibility to cannabis, as well as take steps towards the decriminalization of adult use, we will have a positive effect on the viability and also the long-term sustainability of this sector. Thank you. It's wonderful. Uh, thank you very much for the applause. And with the doors open, Miriam may well have heard that applause. So thank you ever so much for that.